Welcome to Gamer Station Indie Game News. I'm your host, Steven Snake Uke and Lindsay, and this is some of the latest happenings in the indie game world. PAX Dev. The guys behind Penny Arcade Comics and the Penny Arcade Expo have created a new event just for the devs out there. Now, as this is going to be just for the devs, this means that there will be no press or any other attendees allowed. Now, this will be a two-day event that will allow developers out there to get their ideas out and to also share and learn from others in the community. Now, if you're a dev and would like to come, you can find a link to the site below. And yes, passes are limited. They're planning on aiming around 750-ish people to come. Ace of Spades. Hey, you got some Minecraft in my first-person shooter! And indeed, that premise stands very true in this game. Worlds are randomly created. You can break blocks, and your goal more or less is to shoot different people in the face with a gun. Unlike Minecraft, though, where your goal is to build impressive stuff, in this one it's about building defensive barriers, tunneling to an enemy's camp, and apparently you can even make these camps collapse if you tunnel underneath them in a particular way. Now, the game is going for a very, very low price of free, and we have a link to the website where you can download the game below. Lesbian Spider Queens of Mars OST In case you never heard of this game, because you've never looked at our other section in our Browser Games of the Week videos, or this happens to be your first video of ours that you happen to be watching. The game is a retro style game where you're a lesbian spider queen from Mars that has to get her female slaves back. And the gameplay style is, well, there's a video right now, you can figure it out. Now, if while playing this game you felt yourself wishing you could own the soundtrack to said game, well, there's good news. You can download the soundtrack for free at the link that we provided below for you. In Profundus Kickstarter. Now, this game seems to be trying to possibly make you feel really dumb and also likely die a whole lot. Carrying a line that is something very similar to, for every action you make, there will be an equal reaction. You'll need to think about everything you do, or it might just spell your doom. As this involves you exploring a cave, this can be something along the lines of, say, pushing a boulder out of the way and causing a flood of water to fall from above. The game is also using cellular automation to create the world, which definitely makes me feel dumb because I don't know what it is. If this premise sounds interesting to you, head over to their Kickstarter page, which of course, we provide below for more information on the game and to help out to get the game funded. One Single Line Recently released onto the iTunes App Store is One Single Line, an interesting game. Now, as the title says, you only have one single life. Okay, that may not technically be true as I ended up finding a way to get an extra life but that may have just been one gimme because I couldn't get it again. I don't know why. Anyways, as you have one life, after you die in game, you can no longer play it. Unless you get the extra life like I did. The game itself involves you having a character who is running on a rooftop and must jump across a gap between two buildings. Now with each level, it gets harder and further away. Now I myself got to level 10, which is the final level, before I finally failed twice. Now the game itself is free and it's worth a look on your eye plaything of choice. Super Meat Boy and Gemini Roo Postmortem. Now for those wanting a look behind both Super Meat Boy and Gemini Roo or just one or the other, as well as learning some extra info about said games, then you might want to check out the postmortems for these games. Now we did tell you about a postmortem that Team Meat did at GDC some time back, but this isn't the same one though there are some similarities expressed, such as their love of Steam and how several promises Microsoft made, say, such as getting a spotlight on the dashboard, reviews by Major Nelson, etc., were ditched as Microsoft had little faith in the game when it was nearing completion. Now, for Gemini Roo, one of the things I did find interesting is that the art style was, in some ways, inspired by Cowboy Bebop. Then again, I haven't quite picked up the game yet to draw any conclusion on that, so it's reasonable. Also like supposed cameos of Spike, Ed, and even Faye from Cowboy Bebop. Now if you're interested in learning about the games, take a look at these postmortems. Links provided below 
like always. The rating of indie games. Now we told you in previous weeks about the rating fiasco involving indie games. For those that don't know, this involves certain games on the indie game marketplace receiving a massive amount of one-star ratings from attacks from other developers, such as causing certain games to drop 20-plus spots in a week or less. Also, there's a webpage showing that someone asked for 5,000 Xbox Live accounts that they could use. Now, apparently this issue is on the way of being fixed by only allowing Xbox Live Gold members to raid on these games. So if you're like me and you aren't gold, you can no longer raid on these games on their website. You can still raid on these games on your 360. However, they don't seem to be implementing the idea of if you own the game, then you can raid it. So it does beg the question of will these attacks cease or will they still continue but won't be as rapid? Anyways, those one star ratings can't be rolled back. So the ratings shall still remain the same. They are also looking at users who may have abused the system and may suffer with having their accounts banned and or their game removed. Boxatron Sword Trailer Now I believe back when we still had a website and updated it, we talked about this game! Now those that'll recall it, here's a brief overview. It's a dual stick arena shooter that uses voxels, which are kinda like cubes. Now in the game, you can kill tons of monsters, and it has its own physics engine that allows you to blow up walls and buildings. Now the trailer here shows off the editor for creating the lead character, which will be usable by anyone that gets the game, and of course, it'll look nicer whenever it is released. Also, it shows off the sword in all of its mightiness. The game is slated to be released sometime this year. Minecraft version 1.5 released. This was planned a week ago, but it's finally out, version 1.5 of Minecraft. Now for those that don't recall, this update will give you achievements, statistics, weather effects, and of course, the usual performance improvements. Notch has also noted that the achievements and statistics will be getting larger as the game goes on. Like all updates, your game will be updated as soon as you start the game of Minecraft. Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP Micro If you're like me and don't have an iPad, then you'll be happy to know that Sword and Sorcery is coming to iPod Touch and iPhone tomorrow or later today. This micro version of the iPad version is being called Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP Micro. Now, it does have a slightly extended title, but it is the same game as the iPad version, just more micro. If you do decide to get it, it'll cost you $2.99. In this week, we're going to end with the launch trailer for Fancy Pants Adventure, which is now available on the PSN for $9.99. So, as a reminder, as always, each and every Wednesday we have a new video in the series, and also on Sundays we have our Browser Games of the Week videos. So subscribe to us to be up to date on our videos, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook to be up to date on all the other news and stuff that we post. So without further ado, here's the launch trailer for Fancy Pants Adventure. 